Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa ala rasulillah. We begin with the name of Allah, asking for his blessings, asking for his help, and asking for his protection. We praise him, we thank him, and we glorify him, and we ask him to bless his messenger and to elevate his mention and rank. Welcome to another episode of Daily Dose, where we're covering some Qur'anic guidance and instruction related to each one of the 30th, 30th sections of the Qur'an, the ajza of the Qur'an. And today we're on the 10th, 30th section of the Qur'an. It starts with a continuation of what we had discussed earlier related to the location of the Battle of Badr. The exact location actually, it's amazing when you go on a tour with an expert scholar, it's the exact description that's mentioned in the Qur'an. That's exactly where the battle takes place. It also discusses the vision that the Messenger of Allah had. And again, as I said earlier, the best reference to the seerah, to the life of the Messenger Muhammad is the Qur'an itself. It gives us great detail and insight into his life. Then Allah calls on to the believers and gives them six instructions in order for them to attain triumph and victory, in order for them to receive support and aid from the divine, and not just receive it, but rather to make sure that it continues to be with them. So sometimes a person may be supported and may be victorious, but they are not able to maintain it. How can we maintain the support of Allah? And these six instructions are the following. Allah says, number one, to stay firm. And Allah says for us to engage in mentioning Him plenty because that is the way to success. He mentions to obey Allah and to obey His Messenger, which is to obey the commands of Allah in the Quran and to obey the commands of the Messenger in the Sunnah. He mentions about not splitting and differing and bickering with one another because that is going to remove any type of power and strength that the community has. And then Allah says persevere and endure and make sure that you go through the struggle in a resilient fashion because Allah is with those who have that as a character trait. And don't be like those people who are showmanship. They're involved in showmanship, they show off. They go out like the disbelievers of Mecca. They went to showcase their military might and Allah humiliated them and they were defeated. And all they were after is to turn people away from the guidance of Allah. Now, also, Allah speaks to us about the tricks and the plots of Satan, our arch enemy. And He tells us to be careful of those steps and not to follow them. A continuation after that is Allah completes and concludes the surah, Surah Al-Anfal, which is, as we said, the chapter regarding the spoils of war. And again, this is not something to shy away from. It is part of the Messenger's practice and his ministry and the teachings that he taught that Islam does have a martial tradition. So part of a martial tradition when you engage in battle with proper rules of engagement is that there's going to be spoils of war. How are they going to be distributed? Who is going to get some and who's going to not get any? And is this something that is based on God's commands or simply people's personal interests and agendas? Then there is a connection that is drawn between the believers at large throughout the world that are not stopped by artificial borders. Rather, the fact of the matter is our brotherhood is a fraternity. It's an international fraternity and we should all be supporting one cause, the cause of the ministry of Muhammad وسلم, and his mission. Then we start with Surah At-Tawbah. The title of the Surah is Repentance. The Surah is a powerful one. Some of its names is the expose, the expose of the hypocrites, because many of their descriptions is actually going to be exposed. Uh, their, the things that their hearts conceal and what they hide as they identify as part of the community, but in reality, they conspire against it. Allah speaks to us about the time period of the treaty and the contracts between the Messenger of God and between the pagan Arabs at that time and how there is going to be a continuation uh, or after the completion of that time period there is, to, there is going to be a condition of war and a condition of peace and so on and so forth. So all of that was foretold and this is somewhat of a prophecy that actually came true. Um, then Allah speaks to us about the importance of keeping our contracts and our agreements and how prohibited it is for us to undo or for us to break our contracts and our agreements. And then there is a prohibition of 
the pagans, the idolaters from entering into the sacred sanctuary of Mecca and also the prohibition of the believers taking them as close allies and as partners and having any type of coalition and allegiance with them. Then there is a conversation about the relationship with the people of the scripture and even if it happens to be in a military confrontation, how that is to be done and also some of the way out, instead of being in a constant state of, of, of military conquests or of, of campaigns and of confrontation, there is a way out of people sparing themselves by basically being part of the Islamic community and at the same time giving a due tax, which is a tax of protection as they are citizens within the Islamic entity. And Allah speaks about some of the false beliefs and doctrines of different communities. And this is very important to highlight. Again, it's not something to shy away from. Allah wants everyone to attain salvation. And part of the ways that people miss out on salvation is having false beliefs, false doctrines, and a false relationship with the Creator. Um, then Allah speaks to us about something extremely important and unfortunately not much highlighted, which is the lunar months, the lunar months of Islam, the 12 months and how there are four among them which are sacred months and that this is something that Allah has ordained in the very beginning of the creation. And how is it that we are to have a calendar? What is our calendar makeup like? And just as a side point, it's good to highlight that the messengers of God came with a lunar calendar throughout history and many pagan societies throughout the ages followed a solar calendar. Just something to ponder on and to reflect over. And then Allah spoke to us about some of the false practices that the pagans of Arabia had introduced to alter and to change the calendar time to suit their own desires and inclinations because they did not want to follow the restrictions because the sacred months had certain restrictions and they did not want to have any restrictions. Then Allah encourages the believers at large to take initiative and to be proactive whenever the call of Allah is made and they're invited to participate in something that is going to cause them livelihood. True life is in the path of Allah in struggling, in showcasing loyalty to Allah and doing whatever it takes to make the ministry of Rasulullah and his mission go forward and travel on. Then Allah speaks to us about the flip side. So the believers are supposed to answer the call of Allah. Well, we have a category of people that identify as members of the community, but Allah here blames them because what they do is they make up excuses and they start asking for permission not to participate whenever there is any type of group communal activity. And especially the activity of protection of the mission of the Messenger وسلم, and moving forward in the struggle to establish the truth. They don't actually have a valid excuse. Now Allah gives us the valid excuses. If somebody has a ailment, if someone is handicapped, if someone is blind, there is many excuses that people may have. But these individuals had no excuse whatsoever other than not truly being loyal to Allah and to the Messenger of Allah. Then there is a great deal of explaining some of the character traits of the hypocrites. And as we said, we got to be careful because in English, people think somebody who's double-faced is a hypocrite and then they want to impose that understanding on Islam. Islam has very clear definitions of words. So when we say someone is a munafiq, and this is not a word to use lightly because it's a pronouncement and a judgment, we got to be very careful as community members. Sometimes we have a problem with someone and we just drop this name on them and we say, so-and-so is such and such. This is not from the teachings of the Messenger of Allah. Here we are told about individuals who openly identified and claimed to be of the faithful but internalized disbelief and internalized Im improper belief systems and ideas. They simply joined the bandwagon of Islam in order for them to gain some of the social capital after Islam had been established in Medina. Now Allah mentions their descriptions and when we hear these descriptions, it is not for us again to point the finger at other people and say, oh, that's my neighbor or that's my cousin or that's individual so-and-so. Rather, it is for us to do some introspection. Do I have any of these character traits? And then I may have some of them. Then I need to ask Allah to protect me from them. I need to get away from such character traits. Are my friends, the people that I hang out with, people who are described as such? Because then I need to find 
some new company. And also Allah mentions after their character traits, what is going to be the outcome? What's the result of having these beliefs and these ideas and having these actions and these behaviors? There's going to be a natural consequence to that in this life and in the next. Allah mentions to us what He has warned and threatened these people with. And then Allah gives us the descriptions of the believers. Now again, the prophetic tradition is when he would hear about positive traits, he would ask Allah to make them from these people. Whenever he would hear about negative traits, he would pause and ask Allah to protect them from these people and from being among them. So when we hear the character traits of the believers, this is a great opportunity for us to say, I want to seek out to be like these people. And the first thing I need to do is to ask Allah for help. And the second thing is to be around people who can train me to be like this, to have mentors in faith. And then the third thing is to be with good company that embody these character traits because they will rub off of me. Um, and then what did Allah prepare for these individuals in the next life? Of course, Allah prepared for them things that they cannot even imagine, but it's eternal bliss eternal blessings in the life to come. Then the messenger is given an instruction and he is prohibited. And again, it's very interesting. Allah speaks to his messenger in very clear terms with the reverence and respect and the love he has for him. But part of love and concern and respect is to tell the ones you love, you respect and you take care of what to do and what not to do. So Allah tells him and prohibits him from seeking the assistance of the hypocrites in battle, in combat. This is not appropriate. You cannot have them in your ranks because all they're going to do is they're going to cause you problems. You cannot rely on them. You need to know who's truly with you and who's against you. And then Allah also prohibits him from doing something else. We know the messenger of God was someone who's extremely kind and extremely generous, even with people who may have wronged him and did something inappropriate. So Allah prohibits the messenger from seeking forgiveness for these people or from ever praying over them after they pass. Although the messenger of God wished to help people attain salvation even if they were wrongdoing people. But Allah told them, you don't have the ability to do so. And this is key for all of us. Allah is telling the most beloved man to him, the best of his creation, do not pray for certain individuals. Who are we, you and I, to pray for whoever we wish to pray for after Allah has told us this is off limits, there is boundaries that you may not cross. We trust that Allah is the best of judges and Allah will treat people with His justice and with His grace and mercy. So we leave it up to Allah. But when Allah tells us do not pray for certain individuals, we need to stop and say we hear Allah's command and we obey it. This is the end of today's daily dose. Until next time, I leave you in the trust of Allah. I leave you under His protection. May we all live according to the example of the Messenger and embody these great teachings that are in the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May Allah protect you all and shower you with His grace.